The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society representative in your community. Right now, in the offices of many representatives of the Equitable Life Assurance Society, lights are still burning. For until a moment ago, Equitable men have been making phone calls, contacting men and women who look as if they are apt to be far more successful than the average person. Make a point to listen to the middle commercial on This Is Your FBI Tonight, Equitable Men Earth. It tells about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. In about 14 minutes, you'll hear full details on this special plan for every man who believes in himself, believes he will succeed. Tonight's FBI file, The Fiery Fugitive. Recently, a tornado tore through some of our southern states, tore through villages and cities that lay in its path, and caused the death of approximately 50 people. Newspapers in every section of the country featured stories about the tornado on their front pages, and almost every headline gave the latest count on the number whose lives had been snuffed out. The Federal Bureau of Investigation does not take issue with the fact that the news made headlines. For it is well aware that the loss of those 50 people has greatly affected several communities. However, few headlines emblazon the fact that almost that many lives are lost in the United States every day of every week at the hands of American criminals. According to the latest figures, there were almost a thousand murders committed in this country every month during the past year. Nor have these last 12 months been a period when killers went wild. For each year, the number of deaths resulting from criminal action seems to hold at a rather steady level, at a disgracefully high level. Your FBI brings this to your attention because there is something you, the decent citizen, can do about the situation. Put more uniformed policemen on the streets of your city. Pay them a living wage, and the number of crimes will be materially fewer. Fail to do that, and they may increase. And if that happens, you can be sure of only one thing. No one can tell how far the crime wave will go, or where it will stop. Tonight's file opens aboard a freight train that's slowly climbing the mountain grade. A shabbily dressed man stands at the door of one of the boxcars of the train. He calls out to him and... Hey, Brownie! Yeah? Come here! Come on, we're getting off. What for? Nothing here. Look down the bank. See them flies? Yeah. That's a jungle. That means food. Come on. Uh, you okay, kid? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's head down the bank. I wish we could heist the car. Nah, that's no good. I don't like riding freight. That's the best way to travel when you're hot, kid. Got some pegging, cards. There's a path with a pegging. I'm real hungry. We'll bump some grub, them fires. Okay, you two. Come on down here. Come on, come on, get down here. Joe, it's coming. I got two more up here, Charlie. Bring them down. Good time, Gilbert. Ah, good chance. Okay, right up on me. All right, keep two getting moving. Get down that line. Hey, look, what's this all about? You'll find out. Just do what you told me. You need to move out here for a bus, though. Right with him. Okay, get on down the hill into the bus. Meanwhile, at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the office of Agent in charge Young. Uh, yes, Taylor. Have a speak. I just got a call from police headquarters. Two hoodlums we've been looking for in town. 
Humphrey's had the file, but he's out sick, so you better take over. Now, uh, to save time, I'll give you the background. A few months ago, an I.O. came in on two men named Joe Medford and Pete Brown, alias Brown. What do they want to do? Impersonation. Went to the retail food stores back east, said that the federal scale inspectors wanted to pay off the scales were off down. Well, they didn't get much in any store, maybe fifteen or twenty dollars at the most. The job keepers who didn't pay were beaten up. All store owners here were alerted to ask for credentials if any federal inspector presented himself. Well, this morning Medford and Brown went into a grocery store over on the west side. The woman remembered our warning. When she asked to see their identification, they slugged her. And they entered the cash register. How much do we have on this person? All enough, description, pictures, prints. Medford's a three-time loser with a record going back to 1930. Brown has two arrests and one conviction. Mm -hmm. Shall I go over and interview this woman from the grocery store? Why, the police did that at the hospital. They also investigated and learned that two men answering to their description off the northbound freight pulled out of here at noon. Huh? I'll wire ahead and have them taken off. Now do that and notify me when you get in. <laughs> You'll find seats in the back of the bus. Get moving. Okay, okay. You can roll now. All right. There's seats, Joe. Yeah. We sure got crummy looking company. Yeah. Find out what this is all about. Uh, hey, Pop. Yeah. yeah? What is it, boy? Look, what is this deal? Huh? Why the cops load us on this bus? Where are we going? Oh, oh. Up to Mount Rennick. What's Mount Rennick? Yes, sir. Very noble and majestic mountain. Have to be bricked with destruction by fire. Oh, that's fine. What's it got to do with us? Well, we're going to help to put the fire out. You, you mean this ain't a pinch? Oh, oh not at all. Well, then let's get off this. Hey, 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 wait a minute. I, I don't think they'd be in favor of that, boy. Gee, <laughs> they got a right to pick up anybody in the emergency. <laughs> They've been holding up all day. Jungle, club houses, big wolf. They had a fire last year. They used a couple thousand men. Yeah. You, uh, you've done this before? Oh, every year. <laughs> Getting so out of the floor, George. Oh, Why are those guys so happy? <laughs> Why shouldn't they be? They're getting a chance to earn enough to buy a lot more wine. You, you mean you get paid for this? Oh. <laughs> Minute you check out Uncle Sam's wait for the long beans. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's Charlie. Yeah. See you right later. That's hey, Brownie. This ain't too bad. You kidding? Nah. Instead of us running from the government, they're giving us a hideout and they pay us for it. report on Memphis and Brown. Yes, what is it? Well, the railroad didn't find a single deadhead on that freight. But I learned that the train made one stop at a place called Williams. Oh, I've been there. I just spoke to the chief of police. He told me about getting a request for help from the ranger station out of the park. What kind of help? Well, there's a fire that's out of control up on Mount Running. Oh, I see. But all the vagrants in that area were rounded up. Well, then there's a good chance that Medford and Brown were in that round. That's what I think. Let me try to get the park service on the phone. All right. We get an okay for you to go in. You can fly up there tonight. All right, Baron, right up here. Uh, <coughs> that means us, boys. Now, Ken, you get on the bus your line or you get off your line. <laughs> You'll get used to it. After a couple of weeks, you'll line up to sleep. <laughs> no, he's playing so yeah, Come on, boys, come on. Let's get in line. Come on. Uh, what's this for, Pop? Oh, everything. Oh, spell it out. Yeah. Throw equipment, get your assignment, that kind of stuff. Where are we supposed to sleep? Well, uh, right, right over there. That, that old space there. This close to the fire? Oh, <laughs> At least you're a couple of miles away. Close it up Anyway, uh, get a soft job. Why, sure, boy. Tell, tell him you'd like to drop the butter into the mashed potatoes. <laughs> hey, uh, 
Hey, you, you, you better split down your hair. For what? Well, you want your picture to come out good, don't you? That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, take it at that line. What for? Uncle Sam. He's got to know who he's paying. They take your fingerprints, too. Hold it up, man. Don't supply What do we do, Joe? Let him mug him, please. Somebody must check him. Yeah, but by that time, we won't be. Pardon. I'm looking for District Ranger Stan Jones. That's him over by the window. Oh, thanks very much. You Stan Jones? That's right. I'm Jim Tittle, FBI. Howdy. Nice to know you. Same here, Joe. I understand you're looking for a couple of men named Joe Medford and Pete Brown. Yeah, that's right. Are they here? No way annoying. I've gone through my files, and if they were brought in, they registered under different names. But do you think we might take a look around? Uh, we've got a couple of thousand men spread over a ten-mile front. <laughs> You've got a better chance if you stay right here. Oh, how come? Well, we take everybody's picture for the payroll record. Yeah. You can look them over as soon as they're developed. Well, when will that be? Oh, first one's ought to be along and say, oh, maybe ten minutes. Fine. I'll wait. <laughs> Turn in just a moment to this exciting file which shows how your FBI helps protect the security of America. Now let's turn from present security to future hopes. What's in store for America in the 1950s? What do economists say? On the whole, it looks as if we are destined to enjoy the greatest peacetime prosperity in our country's history. By 1960, our annual national income will probably rise to $275 billion, $65 billion higher than it is today. Before they come to an end, the 1950s may well be known as the fortunate 50s. For times like that, times when alert-minded men and women find and make opportunities to forge ahead in their business or professional careers, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has created a special long-range life insurance plan. 
It is known as the equitable plan for men and women on the way up. Consider its three important advantages. First, as your salary goes up, your insurance can keep pace with it. When you get that better job or that big promotion comes your way, you can adjust your insurance to measure up to your increased income. Secondly, while you're waiting, your wife and children have the life insurance protection they need. This means that you have the peace of mind, the freedom from worry about your family that's essential to a man who wants to concentrate on getting ahead. Third advantage, the equitable plan is flexible at all times. It can expand or contract as you see fit and offers you many desirable options which your Equitable Society representative will be glad to explain to you. So why not get in touch with him right away? Phone him and ask for full details on the Equitable Plan for People on the Way Up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file... The Fiery Fugitive. Tonight's case illustrates a point which is applicable to many criminals. Once they have finished using someone, their impulse is to destroy that other person. Gratitude is a word in the dictionary so far as the hardened lawbreaker is concerned. A word which to him is like decency, honesty, courage, or friendship. In his peculiar, deformed mind, those words have no meaning. The only word the confirmed criminal knows that suggests a respectable emotion is mercy. And to the criminal, mercy is a one-way street. He expects that when he is apprehended, a soft-hearted judge or jury will apply it to him. If some of you feel that such a description is unnecessarily harsh, it is ample proof that your acquaintance with our criminal population in this country has been slight, has been, in fact, non-existent. The mind of the criminal is something apart. It does not resemble that of the law-abiding citizen, nor does it function in the same way. Of the millions of criminals now at large in the United States, it is safe to say that no two are exactly alike. However, it is even safer to say that all of them have one thing in common, one unwritten motto under which each of them operates. A motto which asks a simple question, a six-word question reading, Can I get away with it? Tonight's FBI file continues at the district ranger's office. Any luck for those pictures yet, Jim? Oh, hi. No, I stand. Oh. Well, here's another batch. Oh, it's one of Oh, let's see. Well, this one... Oh, he's an old wino. He's been up here on fires a couple of times. Uh, hey, well, here, Stan, this is Joe Medford. Let's see the back of that picture. Here you go. Mm-hmm. He did register under a fake name. Uh, two pounds. Picture ought to be in the same point somewhere. According to these numbers, Medford's over on the west slope. Yeah. Here's Brown's picture. Yeah, let's see that one. Uh-huh. Yep, they're both in the same crew. Oh, huh? have any trouble finding them? You know, let's see, it's a quarter past four now. Nope. Their ship doesn't go on for two hours. They're probably not awake yet. Oh, where are they sleep? Near lookout tower seven. Uh, pardon me, Jim. Get the Granger Jones speaking. Wilson. Yes, Bill. We just found an old man feeding from a bad head. Well, better get him over to first aid. Okay. Said two men named Joe and Brown is over there. Joe Medford and Pete Brown? He didn't know the last names. Well, where are they now? Okay, thanks, Bill. I'll notify all towers. Nothing but dirt. <coughs> Come on, kid. Let's keep climbing. 
Smoke getting thicker. It's thicker. I hope it's not too tough on the horses. They can stand it better than us. Something worries me more than smoke. Oh, what's that? The wind. <coughs> this could be shifting. If it does, we're in for trouble. Oh, how? Fire might jump the valley right under this hill. Oh? Maybe you'd rather turn around. Now, hold and... it, hold it. What is it? Those blue jays. What about them? They're being disturbed by something. Huh? Hey, maybe Medford and Brown? Could be. Let's see that. South, southeast on my compass. Yeah, and mine too. Come on, Jim, let's take a look. <laughs> Hold it, Ronnie. What? <laughs> I got a feeling we're off the trail. <laughs> but it. Clear, Joe. No bushes and stuff. Yeah, I know. Wish we could see something through this smoke. So what about the map? <coughs> that does us no good. Think we should turn back? Oh, I can get mad. We could make out we got lost. Try it again tomorrow, maybe. Ah, oh, you're forgetting, kid. We tap that old guy out. <coughs> oh, we're water. We need a lake. The one by the railroad track. Come on. Again, Jim. Let's get off and look around. All right. Hello, boy. Whoa, whoa. Hello. Ah. Hmm. That wind shifted all right. Ah. Stan, you want to turn back? Yeah, we might have to soon. Come on, let's head up the trail. All right. Stan, where are the other groups by now? Well, we're working a gridiron pattern. Yeah? We're to the south side of it. All of us are working towards the center. Hold it, Jim. Oh, what do you got? Look at that moss there. Yeah. It's been all clawed up. Someone thought there was water underneath. Think it was our two boys? Yep, I do. No animal would be that stupid. Hey, Stan, we need the binoculars, will you? Yeah, sure. Thanks. What do you see? Something moved up there on that opposite slope. Yeah. Yeah, there they are. Here. Take a look, Stan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what can I line up with? Straight up past that big rock, the one with the white face there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I see them. Jim, they're headed right up into the fire. Yeah, can we cut them off? I don't know, but let's try. <laughs> I can handle much more of this. Come on, stay with it. Huh? 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 We don't ship water soon. Now. Wait, wait. Look up ahead. Right there, too. Yeah, yeah. The yard's all around. Me. I know. What do we do? We're stuck here, Joe. Oh. Hey, somebody called. Huh? Oh, come on, down here. Oh, some guys there. Yeah. Well, up the range. Come on, down here. We'll get you out. You hear that, Joe? Yeah. Now, come on. Yeah, yeah. You make it get the eye. All right, come on. Now, follow us down the hill. But there's fire there. There's a burned out patch through those flames. Now, come on. This is going to be awful close, Jim. Yeah. Look at that tree. The one on the right. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's coming down. Look out. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Right. Oh. Howdy, Jim. How about a little water? Here. Yeah. Where am I? You're back at camp. Well, there's been a big blank someplace. Oh? What happened? 
Your head made contact with a rock. Oh? This was after we got past that falling tree. That's right. Then when we hit that burned out patch, why, you tripped. Uh, what about your two prisoners? They're in the local jail right now. And your job is over. That's right, Stan. I just stopped by here to thank you for all you've done. And I want you to know that I'm making a special request that my next assignment be a simple big city stick-up. Joe Medford and Pete Brown were tried in federal court and convicted of violating the statute which forbids impersonation of federal officers. Each was sentenced to a term of 15 years. The forest fire in tonight's case ultimately was extinguished, but only at a tremendous cost. The Park Service does a remarkable job fighting these fires, and the bravery exhibited in this evening's dramatization by District Ranger Jones was no exception to their general conduct, for courage is a vital ingredient in putting out this type of fire. Each year, similar blazes take many lives and destroy thousands upon thousands of acres of property. Those losses are tragic, truly tragic, because they can so easily be avoided. Almost every big fire is started through the abject carelessness of a well-meaning but unthinking person. Many of you now listening to this program are planning spring or summer vacation trips, journeys which may find you traveling through one of this nation's great forests. If you are making any such plans, please remember a few simple rules. The most important are, first, please put out your cigarettes before throwing them away. And second, please extinguish campfires after they have served their purpose. Remember, too, that one moment's carelessness on your part might easily start a fire that would cost a hundred lives. And of that hundred, one might be your own. Just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting FBI file. Now one last word on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. It's a plan for the man who knows that the day will come when his friends will say to him, Hey, Jim, I just heard about your new job. Great going, boy. Congratulations. If you're that kind of man, then the sooner you get in touch with an Equitable Society representative, the better. Ask him for full information on the Equitable Society's life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A dramatic expose of the activities of two expert swindlers. Its subject, the marriage racket. It's titled, The Honeymoon Homicide. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Walter Burke, Sam Edwards, Ed Gargan, Bill Johnstone, Stan Jones, and Rowan Withers. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Honeymoon Homicides on This Is Your FBI. The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, fun for the whole family, follows immediately over most of these ABC stations. Stay tuned. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>